What is up my new Vim friends? I hope you're having a fantastic day because I'm going to show you how to set up Kotlin inside of NeoVim. I personally use Kotlin for work and so I wanted to see if I could actually make NeoVim on par with how IntelliJ works. There's a lot of history that I'll talk about in this video and this is kind of a segue into setting up Java in NeoVim because I'm going to explore that next. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing a Java setup video in NeoVim. If this is your first time on the channel, Welcome, and I hope you stay around and look at all the awesome NeoVim goodies that I've outlined for you. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more content. I'm also gonna do some other videos outside of NeoVim, so stay tuned for more of that. Rewinding back a little bit, if you've done any Kotlin development, then you're probably doing it inside of the IntelliJ IDE, which is provided by the company JetBrains. Now, JetBrains was the company that created the language, but they aren't really interested in separating the language server from the IDE. If you don't quite understand the differences between an LSP or a language server, check out this video in the top right, and it'll help you understand the basics of what's going on there. Generally, a language server can help you utilize auto-completion, go-to definition, and other features that we've come to rely on inside of our editors. Now, if you have a language server, then any client that supports the language server protocol can actually use that language server. Unfortunately, like I mentioned before, JetBrains has both of those coupled. And this post right here shows kind of the history of what's going on and when the request actually happened. I don't believe any movement has been on this. There's actually been some talks about using an embedded NeoVim inside of JetBrains, but if you wanna do any Vim development inside of IntelliJ, then you're gonna to have to use the ID of Vim. I also have a video on configuring that in this top right hand corner, but let's talk about how to set up NeoVim. Before we get started in the config in NeoVim, we should have a way to test our configuration. So let's create a sample Kotlin project. That way we can have something as a baseline to see how our syntax highlighting, autocompletion, and things like go to definition and go to reference are working. For that, I'm gonna be using SDK man, which is on this page. If you haven't installed it already, check it out. There's other options like ASDF or, or installing it manually, but I prefer SDK man for managing my Kotlin and for my Java projects. Once you have it installed, you can use SDK install and Kotlin. Once you hit that, this will install the latest version. If you wanna pin it to an exact version, then the version I'm using in this video is 1.9.22. So if we do this, then we should see that that's already installed. Now we will also need the build tool that builds our Kotlin projects, and that is called Gradle. So if we do SDK install Gradle, then we should see that this is already installed with version 8.6. Now that we have our tools installed, we can create a new project using Gradle. So let's make a new directory called NeoVim example. We'll go into that directory. And then from there, I'm gonna clear this so we can see a little better. And we're gonna use this command called Gradle init, and this will generate a new project. Now I want to create a sample application, so I'll hit two. Then we want to use Kotlin because we're not using any other languages. And I don't want to do multiple sub projects, so I'm going to hit no here. And then I'm more familiar personally with the build.gradle script being in Groovy. So I'm going to leave it as that just for personal preference. Project name, I'll leave it as default. And the Java minimum version, I have it as default because that's a good LTS or long-term support version. So let's just leave it as that. And then we'll have one final question, which is, do we want to generate using new APIs and behavior? I'm gonna leave this as no. All right, now if we clear the screen and we do an LS, you should have a project that looks like this. I'm a big fan of the exa command. So if you do exa dash dash tree, then you should see a project that looks something like this. In researching for this video, there's two main options that you can use to configure NeoVim for Kotlin development. And the first is using the built-in LSP, which is what we're gonna do today. And the other option is to use COC, and that is a whole different way to configure tools inside of NeoVim. It's not using the built-in LSP. There's this page right here that outlines some of the differences between different LSP options. It seems like the built-in LSP is a little bit more performant, so that's why I've opted for this, and that's how I've configured everything else in my setup. I'll leave a link to this in the description, so you can check it out yourself and kind of decide which path you want to go down. We're going to do the built-in LSP option, so let's get started with that. For our setup, I'm going to use a base installation of Kickstart InVim, 
which you can find here. Definitely a great way to start your NeoVim config if you haven't already gotten something or you're not using a distribution. So if we open this up, then I have this alias as KVim, which if you do alias KVim here, you can see that I can launch different NeoVim installations using this NVim app name. Something to really check out if you want to have multiple distributions or multiple versions of your NeoVim config. Now let's swap over to our project and we'll see how this looks without any Kotlin setup. So if I hit Command K, this is something that I have set up to swap between different Tmux sessions quickly. So if I jump to the NeoVim example, then we're back here and I can do KVim dot and we have our different files and setup here. If we open up and we look at the app.kt, then we should see that there's a lot of different errors or different things going on. And we don't really have any syntax highlighting. We don't have any kind of auto completion. So if I did val, then we get some buffer completion, but nothing else. Now let's configure our NeoVim setup inside of our kickstart NVim directory. So we'll open this up and we'll go down to the init.lua file, open that up, and this is where all the main things are happening inside of Kickstart. You can see a nice explainer at the top here. We want to go down to something called servers. Now, there's a couple of ones that are here, but we want to find this block where it's talking about configuring different servers. Inside of here, we will add the Kotlin language server. And we don't need it to have any different config. So we'll leave it like this and a comma at the end. And this should install the server. So this gets picked up down below inside of this block, which is a table where LSP config is going to configure our servers and automatically install them. Now the pieces of this are using Mason for grabbing and installing the server and then Mason LSP config, and then NVim LSP to configure both of those servers from the Mason side and from the NVim side or NeoVim side. Like we talked about earlier in the video, the Kotlin language server is not supported by JetBrains. It's actually open source and it uses the Kotlin compiler like it references here on the GitHub page. And if you're interested in helping support it, then this repo is always looking for more people to help update and maintain this server. So because of this, I think that there's an upper bound or upper threshold to where Kotlin can only be so good because it's not getting the support it needs or using a real language server from the ones that are creating the language. All right, now that we have our LSP configured with our Kotlin language server and it's getting automatically installed, then let's go back to tree sitter, which is gonna give us our syntax highlighting. So if you look for tree sitter, then you'll see a block that looks something like this, which is ensure installed. We want to add Kotlin to this list. So if we do that, then we should have both Kotlin syntax highlighting and also our Kotlin LSP configured. Let's jump back over to our project and we'll go to our NeoVim example, open up this, and you should see at this point the language server and tree sitter installing. If we search for our app.kt, then we should see some really great syntax highlighting and we should be able to do different commands with our LSP. Now, if you hit GD to go to definition, then you should see a jump here. And from here, if you do GR to go to reference, you should see this nice search window and you can go up and down to see the different references and go directly to that. Awesome. One of the other tools that people like to have on hand whenever they're doing Kotlin development is KT Lint, which is gonna format your Kotlin code and lint it. If you do format, which is built into Kickstart, then you get some nice formatting here. If you wanna have KT Lint installed explicitly, I'll show you how to do that now. So let's jump over to our config again. This is our init.lua directory. And if we paste in another tool that is the Mason tool installer, this is what we need in order to install KT Lint for us automatically. Mason, you can configure to install different language servers, but you need something different to do with the tools. Let's jump down to where we have Mason set up here, and now we'll configure our Mason tool to install the KT Lint tool for us 
so that we have this automatically and we don't have to fiddle with whether it's installed or whether it's not. There's a lot of different options that you have to be able to run KTLint. My favorite personally is to use conform.invim. And so we'll install that tool now. So if we go back up to where we have Mason installed here, let's paste another block. If you're interested in learning a little bit more, then check out this video about configuring linters and formatters. And this is highlighted in that video. Basically what we're configuring is some formatters by file type. So we have KT Lint used for Kotlin. And then we have a nice key map where we're configuring leader L, which for this configuration is space L. That way you can trigger the formatting whenever you want. And the LSP is a fallback. Once we save this, we should open back up NeoVim in our example project, and we should see conform get installed as well as the Mason tool installer, as well as KT Lint. All right, we're back over here in our example project, and you can pop open lazy to see that conform actually got installed. Looks like it's not loaded yet because we aren't in a buffer, but that's okay. We'll close this. And then if we want to check that our KT Lint tool got installed, then we can do Mason and we can see that KT Lint is loaded and installed here. Now let's open up our app.kt file and we can see that if we do this and we hit leader L, then we get it nicely formatted just like we would if we were using KT Lint on the command line. Awesome. Now you should have Kotlin all set up and ready to go. Again, I'll caveat this with, it may not be as great as IntelliJ. So I personally use that as a fallback whenever things aren't working correctly. I've seen that this starts to slow down in larger projects, but I'm gonna keep testing it and we'll report back on what I find. Thank you again for watching. If you have other NeoVim content or items that you want me to cover in the future, leave a comment down below. Also check out the description with all the links of things that I talked about today, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks everybody.